Hello everyone, this is Arderimus. Uh This is part two, or a follow-up video, on using Visual Basic 2010 to connect to and read from a MySQL database. In this video, we will be covering how to insert records and update them as well. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using the source code from the first tutorial um, and also the same database. So you should be able to grab that source and follow along if you don't already have it. And I can also provide a link after this one's through. So, all right. First off, um, I'll just go over the database here again. It's very small, very simple. Uh, I'm going to just be inserting a record into this users table. When we insert, re insert a record, we have to make sure that uh, we at least provide the fields that are required, you know, ones that, are, that cannot be null. The other ones you can leave off and update them later if you want. Uh, but these ones have to be added with the exception of any auto-incrementing um, fields like this ID field, auto increments, we cannot add a value to that because the database engine supplies that value. So we'll go ahead and close out of there um, and get started on our code. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this um, database connection string and create a new connection up here that we can reuse for both our reading and our writing to the database. So I just want to grab this connection string out of this parameter field, paste it in there, then I'm just going to get rid of this guy. Okay. Next up, since I'm, I'm just going to be doing all of this in one form, just to remind you uh, from the previous video, we were reading from the database and outputting to this text box. Uh, I should be able to run this now so you can see. So we have, you know, we're looking at a filter for just Mika and her two characters or tunes that we have in the database. You can see what we're doing there. Here's the filter. Uh, if we wanted to view all of them, we could just chop that off. So we've already created the read. Now we need to do the write. So I'm going to create another try um, catch. And I'm going to uh, create a new string, a query string here. It's actually going to be the same one. I'm just going to use it a little differently. Uh, instead of doing a select this time, we're going to do an insert into uh, the users table, which is the one I was going to use. And we have to now add the parameters um, that'll be the column names. Uh, looking back here, if we open up this user table, we have name and password. These are our main required fields. This one's an auto increment, so we don't have to do that. So I'm just going to add a name and a password here. Now when we're providing the column names, we do not need to use um, single quotes but we will need to use them for the values. And make sure you put a space at the end of your expression here. Then I'm going to just drop down to the next line. And here we're going to say values. We're going to add these parameters, these values as parameters. This is going to be the actual data that we insert. So I'm going to go ahead and do Zayfod as the username. And Towel as the password, and I've encapsulated those in single quotes. I'm going to end the string, and that's all there is to it. Piece of cake. Okay. So 
looking down here, we need a SQL command that we've created. So we're going to do my SQL CMD equals new my SQL CMD. I'm sorry, my SQL command. And we're going to use our str query and our database connection from up on top, dbcon. Ready to go. Next up, we're actually going to open our database connection. Just like that. Very simple. Now we have to tell our SQL command to execute this query string. Okay. Now, unlike before, where we used a data reader, we will not be doing that. And we had execute reader. This time, we're going to be executing a non-query. So we'll say mysql cmd dot execute non-query, since we're actually doing an insert instead of a query. And that will now insert these values into these columns. And then we'll close the database. We can catch any errors here. If we get any, we can say message box um, error and bbcrlf. Um, maybe CRLF and our message. All right. So let's go ahead and kick this off and see if it runs. Now, what I've got here is still showing Mika. Now, that's because we still have this filter down here in our read. So first off, we'll just go ahead and remove the filter. But that's not going to be enough because we have an inner join here that connects these two tables wherever the usernames match. Okay. Now, because we haven't inserted any values into the tunes table, there will not be a match between these two tables. So what we'll see is all the characters where there are matches or all the user and character matches. Now what we could do if we want to see information from both tables and the matching data is change this to a left join instead of an inner join. So instead of only seeing matches we're going to see matches as well as the left data which is in this left table. I'm sorry, this table. <laughs> So we'll, it's, we're essentially saying, show us all records here and only matching records here. So let's see if that works, and we should see our new guy. Check it out. Now why is there so many of these? It's because we've run this a few times. Every time we re rerun this, it's going to deposit this information in here. We could add a fifth record. See. Now. Ultimately, what you want to do, especially where your keys are concerned in your database, is to put in some sort of checking, you know, verify that the data doesn't already exist before dropping it in there. Um, so we've learned how to insert into the table. Now, what if we just want to do an update of the table, you know, pick a record and change it? Um, one way we could do that is to just come up here now we'll just create a new query string because they're a bit different. We'll say update users and here we'll say set um, what's one of our field names uh, set password equals 
Powell one. Okay. So if we come over here and look at our table before we run that. Oops. I want to view the data. Edit table data. We can see all of our ZFOD entries. Now we see that the password has been set to towel. And we want to change it to towel one. So one big problem with this query as it stands is that uh, we haven't set any filters on it, which means that if I run this right now, it's going to change everybody's passwords across the board. So we only want to change ZFODs. We better put a filter in there. Space in there too. Where username equals safeod. There we go. So let's go ahead and run this. Ooh, a known column in where clause. So our catch is working properly. Now username, if you remember, is not actually the name of our user field, it's just name. So change that, run it, everything shows up. We did not get a new entry this time. There's not a sixth entry because we took away our insert. However, if we come over here and refresh this query, you'll now see that all of Zaphod's passwords have been set to password 1. Now I could go and let's see if I can do a mass delete here. Let's try updating the email field. Say update, whoops, users set email equals safod at some domain.com. Only where the name is a file. Run it. Runs okay. We're not seeing any characters because he doesn't have any. Come over here, refresh the query, and now you can see this email has been updated. So, as you can see, both updates and inserts use um, execute non query rather than our data reader which uses execute reader um, so that's the main difference between the two other than that it's pretty simple um, I guess if uh, you have any questions feel free to ask and if I can't help you out somebody out there should be able to uh, good luck on your projects take care mm, bye bye